So with Google's upcoming phones for this fall, including the presumed Pixel 6, we're going to be seeing some of the first devices to run on Google's own GS101 Whitechapel chip. But what does that mean for the future of the Pixel series? Well, let's go over all of the major talking points. Thanks for watching 95 Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. So just casting your mind back to where all this started, during an earnings call last fall, Google CEO Sundar Pichai teased some deeper investments in hardware, and that was where a terrific roadmap ahead for 2021 was touted. Many interpreted that as a confirmation that Google would indeed be developing their own processors and effort codenamed Whitechapel, and not to be confused with the British TV show. First rumoured in early 2020, Whitechapel is an effort on Google's part to create their own system on a chip or SOC to be used in Pixel phones and Chromebooks alike, similar in how Apple uses their own chips in the iPhone and Mac. Google was said to be co-developing Whitechapel with Samsung, whose Exynos chips rival Snapdragon processors in the Android space, but maybe not in quite the ways you would expect. Per that report, Google would be ready to launch devices with Whitechapel chips as soon as this year, 2021, According to documentation viewed by us here at 9to5Google, this fall's Pixel phones will indeed be powered by Google's Whitechapel platform. In this document, Whitechapel is used in connection with a codename Slider, a reference we also found in the Google Camera app. From what we can piece together, we believe that Slider is a shared platform for the first Whitechapel SoC. Internally, Google refers to this chip as GS101, with GS presumably being short for Google Silicon. Looking at other projects connected to Slider, we find the codename is also directly connected to Samsung, including references to Samsung Exynos. From the references, it seems that Whitechapel is being developed with Samsung Semiconductor's System Large Scale Integration, or SLSI, division, meaning that Google Chips will have some commonalities with Samsung Exynos, including some software components. The first phones to be built on this Slider platform are Raven and Oriole, two Pixel codenames that we leaked last year. We reported that those two phones are set to be released side by side this fall, presumably as the Pixel 6, and a phone hopefully that isn't called the Pixel 5a 5G. So putting all of that together, this fall's made by Google phones will not use chips made by Qualcomm, but instead will be built on Google's own Whitechapel hardware platform with assistance from Samsung. On top of that, Google declined to comment on our story, so make of all of that information what you will. Naturally, there is no denying that this move has major implications for the Pixel lineup as a whole, but why is Google doing this in the first place? Well, let's take a look at all the pros and potential pros and cons, and we might have a clearer picture of what this could eventually mean. First things first, it's incredibly important to note that right now, all of this does remain speculation. What we know about Whitechapel is very limited at this point in time. What's been reported, though, gives us a better overall picture of what it could bring to the table. So what do we know about Whitechapel itself? Well, a report from Axios is what first put Whitechapel on the map. That report claimed the chip was designed by Google, but at least in some capacity, they have had input from Samsung. Apparently, Samsung would be tasked with producing the chip itself. As far as the specs go, there's not much to go on yet, aside from this being an eight core ARM design. The original report also mentioned that Whitechapel would have a dedicated portion designed to improve the performance of Google Assistant specifically in an always on capacity. At the moment, that's actually all we know about this chip. However, there is a lot we can speculate on. So what does the Pixel 6 stand to gain from this custom chip? Well, the biggest question about Whitechapel is what advantage it will have over current implementations. After all, Qualcomm Snapdragon chips are used in millions upon millions of Android phones each year, and they do genuinely keep getting better and better especially now that more cost tiers are made widely available. There are a few key areas though that Google could benefit from its own custom chipset. First, there's what the original report mentioned, optimizing the chip for specific tasks. This is an effort Google Pixel phones are actually no stranger to. The Pixel 2 saw the debut of a Google chip known as Pixel Visual Core. That custom chip was designed to speed up the AI heavy processing of pictures taken on the Pixel, as well as enabling those processes in third-party applications. The chip actually wasn't present in the 3A, 4A5 or 4A 5G, and while it didn't really break the experience, the speed of processing is definitely noticeable. The Pixel 4 and 4 XL also introduced an upgrade to this chip, the Pixel Neural Core, which was said to improve Google Assistant speed. 
Another custom design in Pixel phones is the Titan M, a security chip used to strengthen encryption and store data such as biometrics. With a custom made chip, Google could, in theory, bring all of that into one convenient place on the chip itself. Google could also benefit from Whitechapel in the Pixel 6 with long-term software support. As it stands today, Pixel phones that run on Qualcomm hardware only get three years of OS updates. It's not awful, but it's pretty disappointing compared to iPhones, which sometimes get six or seven. A huge part of the reason that Pixels don't get longer support is because of Qualcomm. Google worked with Qualcomm to bring future chips up to four years of support, but that still leaves a tough situation for Android OEMs that may want to go past three or four years, but can't reasonably do so because of Qualcomm's support timeline. One more potential way that ditching Qualcomm could help the Pixel series is of course cost. There are too many unknowns at this point to say anything remotely definitive, but a custom chip could bring a more affordable cost for Google versus buying direct from Qualcomm. This could mean the Pixel 6 may have better performance than the Pixel 5, which used a second tier Snapdragon 765G in contrast to the likes of Samsung, OnePlus and other flagships with the 865 and 888. If the cost is low enough, we may also see the chip show up in Google's cheaper Pixel phones, which may improve performance across the board. One potential roadblock though, could be the scale of Google's production. Pixels don't often sell in huge numbers, so costs are likely proportionally higher. So what are the potential downsides of moving to their own chipset? Well, there are probably many other upsides to Whitechapel in the Pixel 6, but what about those potential problems? Well, for one, there's a raw performance issue. Google seems to be working with Samsung on its design, which is good, but Samsung's own Exynos chips are notorious for lagging well behind their Qualcomm counterparts. Given Qualcomm's expertise, it seems highly unlikely that Google could match Snapdragon in terms of raw performance, and that may be a downside to many, but as mentioned, in a perfect situation, Google could find a middle ground that sees lower performance compared to the Snapdragon 800 series chips, but keeps costs similar to the Snapdragon 700 series, which therefore benefits the end user. On a similar note, switching away from the established normal could result in compatibility issues with Android apps and more. Again, there's far too much that we don't know about this chip to even begin to speculate on what these issues may be, but the potential for problems is certainly there and a very real concern. There's also the elephant in the room. After five generations of Pixel, Google has showed it might not be actually that great at hardware. Even the most ardent of fans, ourselves included, have to admit that the company's track record has seen less than stellar quality control and a fair amount of bugs on selected hardware or in specific hardware areas. The Pixel 3 had a laundry list of hardware problems and Google even had to issue better warranties following launch issues with the Pixel 2 series. This is something important to keep in mind as Google produces its own chips, as they're putting an additional and core component of the device under further control, but this could mean performance far ahead of similarly specced competition and an outright rival to the raw benchmarking prowess of Apple's own silicon, but there may be issues down the road. But realistically, that's just about everything we know or we can more or less speculate about at the Whitechapel chip at this stage. We can already tell there is a ton of excitement building and it makes waiting until the Pixel 6 series launches this year that little bit more interesting. Let us know down in the comment section below what you think of all this news and if Whitechapel and Google's own silicon will mean for you and the wider smartphone market. But as always, this is Damien with 95 Google saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.